this article was published on the internet a couple of days ago, a woman in Ohio named Marie Trainer awoke from a coma after being hospitalized for more than 80 days to find both her arms and legs partially amputated. She hadn't been feeling well. They thought it was the flu because she was feeling nauseous and had a bad backache. Her temperature spiked and then plummeted. So they brought her to the hospital where they began aggressive treatments. But it says that within hours, she was developing sepsis. Sepsis is a life-threatening condition where the infection spreads to the bloodstream uh, when you have some sort of bacterial infection. Uh, and her condition continued to deteriorate. She had worsening symptoms and so was put into a medically induced coma as her limbs began turning necrotic and then gangrenous. Uh, if you don't know what gangrenous means, it means the tissue was rotting. Uh, blood tests confirmed the diagnosis of capnocytophaga. Capnocytophaga are a type of bacteria commonly found in the mouths of dogs and cats. These germs do not make dogs or cats sick. It's just normal for the bacteria to be there. The CDC says that most dogs and many cats have capnocytophaga germs in their mouths. Capnocytophaga germs can spread to people through bites, scratches, or close contact from a dog or cat and may cause illness, including sepsis. The organism causes blood to clot, and these blood clots restrict blood flow, which leads to necrosis or tissue death and gangrene in the extremities. Most people who have contact with a dog or cat do not become sick. Uh, the CDC says people with weakened immune systems who have difficulty fighting off infections, for example, people with cancer or those taking certain medications, are at greater risk of becoming ill. The article explains that capnocytophaga is unpredictable. A person can be exposed to the bacteria and or the dog for years and never have a previous reaction. Both Marie and her doctor love dogs, it says, and do not want to terrify owners. However, they are encouraging people to be careful. The doctor says it's a myth that dogs' mouths are cleaner than humans. He says that if you get bit by a dog, you definitely need to go on antibiotics. And he advises us to wash our hands after playing with a dog, especially if you have an open wound. So if you notice signs of infection, such as redness, um, seek medical treatment immediately and be sure to tell the attending physician that you have pets. And the craziest part of the story is this. It says that Marie and her husband, Matthew, say that they said, we still love our animals and they have no plans to get rid of their dogs and can't wait to be back at home as a family. Why, oh why, would you want to keep your dogs after this? You've just lost pieces of your limbs. You almost died. All because of bacteria that your dogs naturally have in their mouths. It is a normal part of their mouth. Why would you want to keep these filthy things? It's like if you had a hobby, like let's say growing a certain type of mushroom, right? And this type of mushroom produced spores that most of the time didn't make people sick, but sometimes unpredictably for reasons no one understands. Sometimes the spores could make you deathly sick and kill you or cause you to lose your limbs. First of all, why would you want to grow that type of mushroom in your house? Second, let's say the spores of this mushroom, which you had living in your house, actually did make you lose your limbs and almost killed you. Why, after that, would you keep growing that mushroom in your house? I mean, this makes no sense to me at all. Knowing the spores could infect you again or infect family members or friends, would you not want to spare your loved ones the risk of becoming infected and suffering the way you had to suffer? Would you not want to protect them from getting infected and losing their limbs or dying? I just don't understand the mentality of these dog lovers at all. First of all, I would never grow those types of mushrooms in my house. But, you know, maybe people just don't know the risks. I think most people 
probably don't know about capnocytophaga. But here's a person who knows the risks of having a dog because they've been infected with the bacteria and they came close to dying and are now missing portions of their arms and legs. So ignorance is not an excuse here. They know the risks. Why would they want to put their loved ones at risk? Do they not even love their loved ones? Like, it's so unnecessary to keep a dog in your house. It's not a human. I know these people think of their dogs as their children, as their family members, but they are not. You can't just get rid of your family member because they transmitted a disease to you. But dogs are not family members. They are not human. They are shit-eating, vomit-slurping, crotch-sniffing, leg-humping, unpredictable, instinct-driven, scavenging, remorseless, fanged predators that do not love you because they are incapable of love. And because of their tiny brains, they care about nothing except for attacking, eating, and having sex. And they will eat your face after you die if given the opportunity, even if there is ample dog food available. Because they are bloodthirsty animals. They don't love you. They wag their tails and lick you because you are their food dispenser. Nothing more. Just like their ancestors licking other members of the pack around the mouth uh, is a remnant of juvenile wolf behavior. They do this because they are trying to make you vomit so that they can eat your vomit. It is not love, okay? It's not affection. Now, here is an article from last year, which you might remember. Uh, you might remember these stories. They're still pretty recent. Capnocytophaga bacteria killed a 58-year-old Wisconsin woman named Sharon Larson in June of last year after a dog nipped her hand. And in the same month, left Greg Mantufel, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Mantufel, a 48-year-old Wisconsin man, they left him a quadruple amputee, which means he lost both hands and both lower legs to amputation. He also lost portions of his nose. He had not been bitten by a dog, but simply came into contact with dogs. That's all it takes. The article says that he recalls contact with a few dogs that was limited only to petting. He might have touched his eyes or mouth after petting the dogs, it says. That's all it takes. Not even a lick, though a lick can certainly infect you with the bacteria. All you need to do is pet the dogs and you can die. The article states that neither patient reported a compromised immune system or other risk factors identified by the CDC, which means we can disregard what the CDC states about how people with a weakened immune system are at a greater risk of becoming ill. These were healthy people with healthy immune systems that got sick. Now one is dead and the other has no hands or feet and is missing parts of his nose. There's a doctor, Dr. William Schaffner, Schaffner, man, I should know how to pronounce it. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm, Schaffner I'm going to go with, professor of infectious disease at Vanderbilt University Medical Center in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, he said, uh, quote, it's extremely rare. We don't know why some people get very ill from it and some don't. This can affect a perfectly normal person, end quote. Well, I don't care how rare it is. I am not letting any dog lick me. I'm not touching any dog because I don't want to take the chance. No dog is worth my limbs or my life. And I can't stop my kids from doing what they're going to do at their friends' houses. Uh, I can't stop my friends and my family members from doing what they're going to do. But... When they tell me that they came into contact with dogs, I tell them it bothers me and they know I am concerned and they understand why. I advise them to stay away from dogs. I tell them the truth about these bacterial infections and about parasites and other things such as, you know, dog bite statistics and um, facts and myths about dogs, whatever. But, you know, I educate them and everyone should do the same with their loved ones. You know, tell them the truth. Be honest about the risks. Let them know they are putting themselves in danger. 
I just don't understand why people would put themselves at risk like this. It makes absolutely no sense to me. Uh, I understand that dogs provide companionship, but so do human beings. In fact, human beings make far better companions. Uh, anyway, again, this is super crazy to me in the article. It says that this professor, Dr. Schaffner, cautioned against overreacting. He told people not to make a big deal out of this. He said, we don't want to strike fear in the hearts of all dog and cat owners. This is a very rare event. Uh, he said, if you do get an injury and it looks like it's getting worse or you're not feeling well, seek medical attention quickly. Well, it seems like a very, very stupid risk to take because it is totally unnecessary to own a dog. Now, why some people get sick from it while others do not is still not understood, but the fact is most dogs have it, and they transmit it to us. It's a chance I'm not willing to take. And you shouldn't take it either. It's stupid. Also, while it's true that humans transmit disease, we are social animals, and we need other humans to survive. It's not like we can avoid humans as a precaution. We need to interact with other humans, or else we will suffer and die. We do not need to interact with dogs at all. There's absolutely no need for it. Owning a dog is as necessary as growing a deadly type of mushroom in your house. Get rid of it. It's totally unnecessary. Find another hobby. There are so many other hobbies you can pick up. Build RC airplanes. Make candles or soap. The possibilities are endless. They keep saying that getting sick from Capnocytophaga bacteria is super rare, but I wonder how rare it really is. Because the article explains how a spokesman for the CDC, Benjamin Haynes, said that cases of Capnocytophaga infection do not have to be reported to the CDC. Still, the agency received reports of 12 cases last year, says that these are likely only the most severe cases or those in which diagnosis was complicated for some reason. So who, who really knows how prevalent this is? But the Larson family is taking this doctor's advice. The dog is still living with Sharon's husband, who says there is no change in how much they love the filthy thing. Can you believe that? What the hell is the matter with you? This is a filthy, filthy animal. You should not want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. In this article, Dr. Stephen Cole, a lecturer in veterinary microbiology at the University of Pennsylvania School of Veterinary Medicine, says, We know that pets have wonderful health benefits in our life. He said, We know that they can make us happier, healthier people as long as we approach that in a safe way. That means practicing good hygiene with your pets, including not letting them lick open wounds or sores, washing your hands and seeking proper medical attention for bite wounds. I would hate that anyone would think that this is a reason to give up their pet, he said. See my video called, Does Having a Dog Really Make Us Healthier? Research shakes the idea that it does. We do not need dogs to be happy and healthy. I think this guy is not going to state the obvious because doing so would cost him his livelihood. I mean, if people realize how unnecessary, filthy, and dangerous dogs are, they wouldn't own them. And if they didn't own dogs, they wouldn't need to take them to the vet. And if there were no vets needed, then this guy would have no one to lecture to and he would be out of a job. So he has a vested interest in keeping people interested in owning dogs. He's not going to tell people the truth, but the truth is so obvious. These creatures are filthy and disgusting. They transmit deadly disease and are totally unnecessary. Everyone should get rid of their dogs to prevent themselves from dying from a preventable disease or losing their limbs. As for the man who lost his hands, feet, and nose, uh, the article says he still has a soft spot for dogs, including his pit bull, who he doesn't believe led to his infection. She isn't much of a licker, he said. He said, I just can't stop liking dogs because this happened. I will always love dogs. This completely blows my mind. Completely. I just don't get it. I, it just shows me how brainwashed these people are and how deep the conditioning goes and this mind control we are under 
um, see my video about the dog cult where I talk about that. So anyway, I did a bit more searching on the internet and I found other cases of people becoming infected with capnocytophaga, uh, such as this case report of the bacteria causing prosthetic hip joint infection following a dog scratch. In this case, uh, an 80 year old woman with no specific risk factors, such as compromised immune system, uh, became infected with capnocytophaga and died two days after being bitten by a dog. So she had nothing wrong with her immune system. In this other case, a 69 year old immunocompetent woman, again, that means that she had nothing wrong with her immune system. She was totally healthy, became infected with capnocytophaga after being bitten by a dog and lost both her hands and feet. Uh, in the second case of this report, a 65 year old, again, immunocompetent man was bitten by a dog and developed meningitis as a result of capnocytophaga infection. Despite antibiotic therapy, his condition deteriorated and he's left with a lack of strength and motor skills of the right hand. Now, in my video about how dogs transmit Pastorella bacteria, I go into detail about meningitis. Meningitis is the inflammation of the meninges, which are the membranes that enclose the brain and spinal cord. In that video, I explain the damage done to the brain often leaves people with lifelong disabilities. So check out that video if you haven't seen it already. So it's not like you get meningitis and then you get over it and it's over. No, there are often horrible complications that disable people for the rest of their lives. Like in this recent case, where a person became infected with capnocytophaga, developed meningitis as a result, and is now left with permanent hearing loss. Their useless dog made them go deaf. This is crazy. Get rid of your dogs, people. And here, Capnocytophaga killed a person in Italy. Here, a 70-year-old Caucasian woman was treated for Capnocytophaga septicemia. So again, it, the infection spread to her blood. Uh, she got it from her pet Greyhound. It goes on and on. You can find many other case reports on the internet if you type capnocytophaga in the search bar. It is a horrible, scary illness that you do not want to get. It is also very easy to avoid. Just stay away from dogs. <laughs> Encourage others to stay away from dogs. Seek companionship from your own species. Humans make the best companions because they can listen to you, they can understand your language, they know what you're saying, they can respond to you, there's a two-way conversation going on, and it's not all imaginary. The relationship you have with a dog is all in your head, it's all imaginary. It's like having a relationship with a teddy bear. Um, anyway, watch my other videos, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share, and remember, the future is dog-free.